What's up everyone, John Rentje from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of the BlackBerry Q10. I was super excited for this phone. It's got a full QWERTY keyboard and awesome BB10 built in. Let's go ahead and see if my enthusiasm is waned or is still there. Let's get started. Let's get started. I'm gonna begin the way I do all my reviews with a disclaimer. I used this bad boy for nine days straight as my daily driver. I thought that gave me enough time to use it, get to know the nuances of the phone, and figure out whether or not it's good, bad, or just straight up in between. This is not gonna be a full review of BB10. I've covered that when I did the Z10 before. Um, so I've gone through that at length. I'll talk about it a little bit, but not a full review of the OS, more of the phone itself and how the OS works with the device. So no matter what the phone does or what kind of key text input it's got, if it's not gonna make them phone calls, not gonna be super useful to you. I was a bit concerned because of the phone's short length that it wasn't going to pick up my voice very well. Uh, those concerns were very quickly put to rest. Uh, the phone quality was awesome. It was really, really crisp. Uh, I've had demonstrations before of HD voice. It obviously didn't sound HD, but the quality of the audio sounded really good. And on the other end of the call too, uh, everyone said it sounded very solid. No white noise, no pops, nothing at all. Uh, no drop calls during my nine days with it, which is becoming more and more common place. Uh, this is an unlocked unit that I did test uh, on AT&T's network. I didn't try it using T-Mobile, so all this is just reflective of AT&T, but it did work very well. I was able to pull in a pretty strong signal strength as well, so if you live in a fringe area, uh, don't worry too much. I just want to remind you of the specs of this guy in case you forgot what the Q10 is packing. It's pretty much spec for spec, the same as the Z10 or the Z10, depending on how you want to pronounce it, save for a smaller screen and that their keyboard. So what that means is we've got a 3.1 inch square screen at 720 by 720 with a 328 ppi uh, it's a super amoled display uh, running blackberry 10 it's being powered by 1.5 gigahertz dual core chip it's the snapdragon variety augmented with 2 gigs of ram uh, 16 gigs of internal storage and of course you can up that uh, via micro sd up to 64. Uh, the main cameras it's got one 8 megapixel sensor on the back that can shoot 1080p on the front it's got a 2 megapixel sensor living right there by the earpiece. Wi-Fi, it's the standard stuff, 802.11 A, B, G, and N, no AC here. Uh, Bluetooth 4.0, it's got a 2100 milliamp hour battery, uh, and the rest of that stuff you'd expect. It does also have micro HDMI if you wanna hook it up to a TV. All right, so we're into the specs. Let's talk about the phone since that's why you are here. So as I put together my notes for this review, I realized most of what I said and my first impressions were still very accurate. Let's begin though with this glorious keyboard since that's why most people are gonna pick up the Q10 because they want that physical clicky clackiness that it provides. And the moral here is I love it. I love the keyboard on the 9900. This one is just as good, if not a little bit better. The keys are actually a little bit larger. You don't have sort of a curve to them. Uh, totally flat keys. The frets are placed awesome. I really just love the typing on this. Uh, interestingly though, I'm not much faster typing on this than I am on a virtual keyboard, but I really enjoy typing on it more. I found myself typing longer email just to, to keep my thumbs moving. The feel of that actual button, at least for me, was something I really, really enjoyed. So when it comes to the keyboard, not surprisingly, BlackBerry knocked this one out of the park. They've been doing these for years and they've been getting better and better at each iteration. And this is really the creme de la creme of uh, physical keyboard. So hats off to BlackBerry for that. So if you want a phone that's got a great physical QWERTY keyboard, um, you can stop watching right now. This is the one to get. Uh, it is absolutely incredible. But if you want a phone that does a lot more than just a keyboard, you're gonna wanna keep watching. So that glorious keyboard I mentioned comes with a little bit of a setback. So BB10 doesn't have a physical home button no matter where you look, if you wanna go home, you have to do a swipe up from the bottom, which is great, it works well on the Z10. On the Q10 though, you don't have much of a gesture area right above the keyboard. So when you wanna do your swiping, you actually have to start almost at the keyboard and then swipe back up to get home. Something that I found a little bit annoying. Would've liked to have a tad more space between the screen and the keyboard. It didn't really affect my accuracy. I was able to hit the home button all the time. It just was a minor annoyance as I used the device. All right, so next let's talk about this screen. It's a square 720 by 720. You'd probably think that's enough pixels to make it look awesome. Uh, you would be wrong. Things just don't look sharp on the screen this size. They don't look pixelated. They just don't pop out the way other devices I've tested have. Now, in all fairness, uh, the devices I've been using have all been 1080p screens recently. So I might have a little bit of bias in my brain uh, that is coming out when I talk about this. It's a passable screen. It is not not the best screen on the market by any stretch of the imagination. Um, that's size included. And we'll talk about the size of the screen a little bit later. Next, let's talk about speed. It's pretty quick. Same speed pretty much as the Z10 apps open pretty quickly. Uh, no issues there at all. I was able to play video and everything nice and quick uh, without really any issues whatsoever. So on every other phone I test, 
I don't care if there's a physical buttons on it. I don't care if there's a physical home or end button. But for some reason, when I use a BlackBerry device and I don't have it, I really find myself missing it. Uh, the dialer here is an app that's got a launch to fire up and then you can dial. It's like that on every other phone, but I can't figure out why for some reason I wish this had a physical send and end button on it, which is so weird to say in this modern age, I wish we had more buttons. But for some reason on the BlackBerry, I really just hope that it was there. Um, go try the Q10 in the store and see if you feel the same way. This might be something that's unique to me, but from a personal standpoint, I really would have liked to have had a send or an end button if I want to pick up a call to just do that, that having to go to different messages or dial that having to go to different screens. And I know iOS and Android don't have those either, so it's irrational, I get it, but I still wish they were there. Next 8 megapixel camera, there's not much to say here, it's fine, it takes average pictures, you're not going to blow them up, put it on your wall and sign them Ansel Adams. If you want to take camera phone pictures, it's going to be fine. It, average enough. Um, talking next about BlackBerry App World, it's still not super awesome. There are some apps there, but not a ton. Side loading apps on there is super easy. You can do it through a Chrome extension. I actually put an article up on Techno Buffalo telling you how to do it. Um, but so if you want to side load, they're there, but things don't always work. Instagram, for example, uh, isn't in BlackBerry's app world, but you can side load it, but it's an older version of Instagram, and you have to do some weird login through Facebook to reset your password stuff to get it work, and you're not gonna have the video options that Instagram now offers. So double-edged sword there, you can get more apps. They don't always work 100%, they're not always updated, but they are still there. So my advice is figure out what apps you use the most and see if you can get them either side loaded uh, or on BlackBerry app world. The big glaring one that wasn't in BlackBerry app or at least for me um, is Instagram whatsapp there is now so there's still a lot of good stuff coming and hopefully more uh, will be there over the coming weeks and months next let's talk about battery it's actually one of the biggest batteries Blackberry's ever put on one of their phones they 2100 milliamp hour fare and it worked great it's able to get through a full day no problem at all off the charger at 7 30 two emails being checked pretty consistently uh, an hour or so of phone calls some text messaging some angry birds being played on here connected to wi-fi most of the day at the home or the office able to plug it in but look like about 30% of battery life left. So no problem getting through one day. Uh, two days, you're gonna wanna plug it in, but my big test, if I can get through one day without worry, um, then that's good enough for me, and this phone definitely is able to do it. Um, next, let's talk about build quality. This phone feels awesome. Uh, Blackberry, again, knocked this one out of the park. Uh, sort of that soft touch-esque feel of the weaved glass on the black model feels really nice. The phone's got just enough weight to feel premium, but not heavy. Uh, they really killed this one. Uh, they've done a great job with build quality on their high-end devices. Uh, and this one really, really nails it. I would have liked perhaps some metal accents along the style like we had on the Bold 9900, but sort of that aside, uh, this is a really good feeling phone. Uh, so some other small gripes and pros. I would have liked to have obviously had more than four apps show on the screen at one time, at least multitasking apps, but that's the limitation just the screen size. You could scroll through and get more, but at least the four you can see. Would have been nice to be able to see maybe six on there. Uh, the screen also felt a little too small to me. I would have liked perhaps a 3.5 inch screen that wasn't square, that still had that same QWERTY keyboard. Um, but it's certainly passable reading emails, had to do a lot of scrolling through. Um, but you know, again, if you want something that's got that smaller screen size and a small package, it's still a good way to go. So I think the moral with the Q10 more than any other phone is you already know before you watch this video that this phone's for you. If you want a physical QWERTY keyboard, then yes, by all means, pick this device up. It feels awesome, it's gonna perform well, you'll be able to get to the day with battery life. You finally have a real browser uh, on a BlackBerry device. But if you're sort of in the, I don't know if I want a QWERTY keyboard, I don't know if I don't, I'm gonna advise you to not get the Q10. Uh, if you're not sure what camp you're in, there can be a lot of applications that are come out that are great for soft keyboards. Um, I was really, really jazzed about using this device. And after I used it for my nine days, I kind of felt myself wanting to go back to my HTC One. Not because I didn't like the keyboard, because there was other things I wanted to do other than type. Uh, and if you find yourself that all you want to do is a phone for work that you want to email with or text, then this is a really great choice. Um, if you do a lot of other things, you might want to look at the Z10 if you want to stay in BlackBerry's ecosystem. So overall, this phone gets a very solid 7.5 on the Techno Buffalo scale. It's very serviceable, it works well, probably serves you well for the next two years. But if you want something that can do a little bit more, can offer a bigger screen size, a higher resolution, you might be best looking elsewhere. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Do you agree, disagree, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave your comments right down below into what have you. Please give the video a thumbs up, we most definitely appreciate it. Check us out at technobuffalo.com. John Rettinger, I'll see you in the next video.